what does it look like to pass your faith from one generation to the next generation? And I would just tell you for Sharon and me, I mean, really, this has been our life's passion of doing ministry together for over 30 years. Really, it's our marriage mission statement. Now, many of you uh, may have a mission statement for your office. You may have one for your business. Possibly, you even have a mission statement for your life. And, and I would just ask you to tap in. Like, do you have a mission statement for your marriage, for your family? And for us, it's to live our lives of faith in Jesus in such a way for us, our boys, our three sons, and then for the next generation, but especially for those living in South Tampa, that they would see that God is real and to chase after Christ. I mean, for us, what we would love to see is not only do they hear that from us, but they see that in us, that they see that our faith is sincere, that it is special to us because we want them to know that there's a God that loves them. There's a God that has a plan and a purpose for their life and that God cares about everything in their life. It was so great to hear Lance describe that even during worship today that God not only cares about your eternity and we are convinced uh, through the teaching and the reading of the scripture that this isn't it. Like this isn't all that God has designed us for, that there is an eternity that God would love for us to spend with him, but there is a choice that we make of where we're going to spend that. And so, yes, God cares about your eternity, that Jesus died on a cross for you so that you could experience salvation in him, that you would not just have eternity in heaven one day, but that you could have an abundance abundant life on this day. So yes, he cares about your eternity, but he also cares about your schedule today. He cares about what's going to happen on Monday. And so our life passion is to live our lives as a couple in such a way that others see that our faith is real. Now, they may not necessarily have put their faith in our faith, in the faith of our Lord, but they go, hey, at least for them, it's real. And so we just want to impact uh, generations to come, uh, to follow after Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, many of you have heard this verse before, but Paul writes this, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Now, for some, that may be like, that's pretty arrogant. Wow, like, uh, that's not very humble to, to say that. And I would say, yes, if you disconnect the first part from the second part, absolutely. But remember the second part. So be imitators of me, Paul says, because I'm desiring to imitate Christ. So Paul was saying, even to those of you who put your hope and faith in Christ, for us to be imitators of Christ, therefore those who are following us, really they're not following us. Those that are looking up to you, they're really not looking up to you. They're following and looking up to the Christ that's in you through the power of the Spirit. So I, I think all of us. Uh, have been called to live this type of life, and yet many of you would go, wait, like, I, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I don't know uh, if I could live my life in such a way that it would be worthy of imitation, and yet I would tell you, I, I understand in your own strength, right, that no, but in the strength of the Spirit of God that dwells inside of you, yes. Galatians 2.20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the whole purpose of our lives and uh, to live day in, day out is, can be summarized in this initial invitation from Jesus. And here's what Jesus said, Matthew 4, 19. Come, follow me. That's the invitation. 
is for you and I to follow after Christ, to allow him to take the lead. Sharon and I had the privilege of being at a wedding yesterday, and uh, it was a beautiful ceremony. Uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, missionaries that we helped support. Their uh, daughter was married, and it came time for that magical moment where the, uh, the, the uh, uh, father of the bride gets to share that dance. And, and as they looked at each other, uh, the bride said this, Dad, just take my lead. And I thought, man, well, that's a beautiful picture of what you and I do in this dance with the Lord. Jesus takes the lead, and we simply follow. So the question then becomes this. If others were imitating you, would they be imitating Jesus? Would their thoughts be honoring to him, their desires honoring to him? Would their words and their actions and their lifestyle be honoring to Jesus as you lead them in following after the Lord? And the reality is this. As a disciple maker, Jesus has called all of us to do that. That we are to show other people what it means to follow after Jesus, to be one of his disciples. And again, you and I have this amazing opportunity to live our lives not only worthy of the gospel, but to live our lives worthy of imitation. You know, they say the greatest form of flattery is what? imitation, right? Um, and so you and I have this incredible ability to live our life modeled from the greatest life that was ever lived, Jesus' life, who ultimately gave his life for you and 